If this pain were due to a herniated disc, which is generally what people mean when they say they slipped a disc. So if that pain was due to a herniated disc, th the treatments for the clunial nerves wouldn't provide long lasting relief and wouldn't actually resolve their pain in a very short amount of time. So one of the things that kind of comes up a lot, uh, not necessarily with my patients, but a lot more when I'm kind of on social media talking with people about low back pain and things like that, is this idea of slipping a disc or slipping a vertebra, I've even heard. So I wanted to spend a few minutes here to discuss this. I've discussed it in a video in the past, but I was compelled to talk about it again, just so that way people have a little bit of a better understanding of what might be happening. You know, I don't think that it is predominant a disc slipping or a vertebra which is a bone slipping but rather actually an injury to the clunial nerves usually the superior clunial nerves but sometimes the middle clunial nerves and I think this is important to discuss because if we have a concept in our mind of why we're in pain that may limit our thinking on certain things and so if we've been told for example that we have a slipped disc one person might think that their disc is out of place and that means that certain treatments that they might hear from friends or things like that, they might not think that they'll help when they could if that other therapy is actually gonna be addressing maybe the actual cause of their pain if it's not an actual slit disc. So that's why I think this is important. Yes, you can have a herniation of a disc, which is where the inner part of the disc herniates through a tear in the outer part of the disc. That can happen. You can have a bulge, which is basically where the inner contents kind of push out on the outer portion of the disc and create a larger surface area. And that can encroach on the spinal cord, the nerve roots, depending on what level you're at. What I have seen clinically in practice is that in the majority of time, I'm talking at least 80% of the time, when patients come in with acute back pain, and it fits the classic description of when people say they slipped a disc, meaning they have pretty intense low back pain. They usually have some muscular guarding. Sitting for long periods of time is gonna be painful. Lying down, they have to lay in certain positions, usually on their side, kind of in the fetal position, because that's gonna relieve some tension on the back. Other people, it might be you know laying on their back with their knees up, not in a full fetal position. But majority of the time, what I see that is actually a superior or a middle clunial neuropathy or a neuralgia or a neuropraxia, a neuritis, whatever the term we wanna use, basically a mild to moderate nerve injury to the superior clunial nerves and the middle clunial nerves. So the superior clunial nerves are gonna come off the lumbar spine, right? Anywhere between L1 to L5, depending on the, on the patient. And those are gonna go over, run over top of the iliac crest, and that's gonna provide sensation to basically the upper buttock and, and middle glute area. The middle clunial nerves are coming off of the sacral spine, right? Mainly S1 through S4. And those are going to provide sensation to more kind of the middle inner part of the butt and then scoot outwards to the middle aspect of the glutes as well. And so the reason that I believe that this is one of the more common reasons on a quote unquote slip disc or when somebody has an acute back injury is because when we come in and we treat with perineural injection therapy or a targeted nerve hydrodissection for those nerves, we see almost near complete resolution in as little as one to three treatments for those acute cases. And so my thought process is this, if this pain were due to a herniated disc, which is generally what people mean when they say they slipped a disc. So if that pain was due to a herniated disc, th the treatments for the clunial nerves wouldn't provide long lasting relief and wouldn't actually resolve their pain in a very short amount of time. And so uh, a patient I had a few months ago throws his back out every kind of two to three years and it always comes the same it's usually when he's squatting or deadlifting in the gym and he feels something kind of give in his low back and then he has a pretty intense pain that stays in the low back and the glutes it does not radiate down the leg he doesn't have increased pain with coughing sneezing or bowel movements which that is 
characteristic of an actual herniated disc compressing on a nerve root. And he has a lot of this guarding in his low back that, you know, it makes it hard to walk, hard to lay down, all that type of stuff. And so he came in for an, you know, an evaluation and see if there's anything I could do for it. And within two treatments with one perineural treatment and one nerve hydrodissection, we completely resolved this pain and that took about a week. Meanwhile, for the past seven or eight years, all of the flares he's had in his low back usually lasted at least six weeks. Sometimes I think one of them was uh, upwards of three months that he had this chronic pain before it resolved. And so the fact that we were able in him to resolve his pain in a week with these treatments tells me that all those times that he injured his back, it likely was not a herniated disc or a bulged disc or a slip disc, but rather a superior clunial nerve neuropathy. And so we see that pretty frequently. We treat it on a weekly basis. And it's just how I think about acute low back pain now. I believe that most of the time, it is a superior and middle clunial neuropathy. So if you are suffering in pain and you frequently slip a disc or throw out your back, I really encourage you to seek a consultation to have your clunial nerves evaluated. See you later.